Julie. Oh, so um, you guys know that I've been doing Tech Talk Lives now for a little over two years. And every time I discover somebody through Facebook or Instagram, uh, I, I get excited to bring them on and they're also new to me. And so if, Tam, if Tamara is somebody that you already follow, fabulous. But if you've never met her, boy, are you in for a treat today. Anyways, welcome Tamara to today's Tech Talk Live. Thank you for being our special guest. Thank you, Amy, for having me. And thank you for all that you've been doing to, to keep the industry engaged. Thank you. Yeah. You know, when we first started doing tech talks, it was just me talking to just other techs. And then eventually we've been able to bring on manufacturers and chemists and magazine editors. You are the first time I've been able to bring on a politician. And oh my gosh, your resume is so incredibly impressive mm -hmm. and what you're doing for our industry. And so um, I don't even know where to begin with you. I really want to talk about all these titles you hold now, but I want them to know where you got started first and then we'll kind of work our way through. So you've been a licensed nail tech for over 18 years. What got you into the beauty industry? So yes, Amy, I was a licensed, was a licensed nail tech for 18 years. I owned my own salon for 10 years and I actually you know, Amy, I could not do acrylics. I could not do gels. I couldn't do a wrap. I was awful. But what I could do, Amy, was a mean manicure and a mean pedicure. So yeah. I figured that if I, I had to master this because I love the industry and I love polishing and I love the whole nail and just everything about nails. And I was like, OK, I'm a master manicures and pedicures. And I did. And that's all I did, Amy, for 18 years was manicures and pedicures. Yeah. And, you know, there's so, yeah, there's so many people that even when we educate them, find your niche, follow what you really want to do. You don't mm -hmm. have to have the salon menu that has all these things with all these products that go to it. You need mm -hmm. to find what you want to specialize in and you can be successful just doing one service of like what you did, even with natural nail care. Yeah, I just natural nails, just manicures and pedicures. And I didn't have a large, a large menu and you know, I didn't have a huge clientele individually. When I owned the salon, I had a lot, much larger, larger clientele. I had employees. But, you know, I, I really love this industry. And my passion for this industry is what led me into politics. And I've run for office. I'm not an elected official, but I've run for office. Actually, this is my fourth run for office. So it's my passion. It's my love for the beauty and barber industry and watching the laws that are you know, used against us. You know, right now we've been facing deregulation as an industry for quite a number of years. And after 18 years of doing services for the last seven years, so I've been in the industry since 95. So in the last seven years, I've devoted everything to health, safety and sanitation and raising our, our education standards and advocacy, engaging barber professionals in the political process and understanding where our power is. You know, this industry, go back to where licensure actually came from. Uh, I don't think professionals know that manufacturers were behind it. They, they understood that they have products that if were used incorrectly, you could harm someone and that, and, and they didn't want that kind of liability. So they were very integral in the very beginning for professionals to even be licensed. So, you know, this this industry has a long history and, you know, we just got to we got to continue to strengthen the professional license and get behind those of us that do this. Those of you that continue to do this day in and day out as your livelihood. Yeah. So I'm 28 years in the industry, but I come from a long line from my mother's, my grandfather, my aunts and all of that. So in 1991, I helped change the laws here in Wyoming, where I'm at, to create a nail only program. And then years later, we went on to be able to to help change how they they qualified their instructors to be in a school. And so it's 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 a fight and, and there's a lot that goes into it and so you were a nail tech for 18 years you owned your own salon for 10 years you also have a pro beauty supply distributorship is all of that is a distributorship still going well actually it my salon name was nails on natural like i said it was all natural just manicures and pedicures so i continue to have online products that i offer i still have clients that still ask me to this day about you know the things that I use and the way, because you know, there's some great products out there, and the things that I use and and how I maintain their nails, and if they if they're able to do them at home, how. So I've just maintained the online website with the products. Yes. 
Oh, that's so wonderful. I went to your website and it's very nice. Well. <laughs> Actually, I went to a lot of your websites. <laughs> like I said, you have such an impressive resume and what you're doing for our industry. So just to, to brag about you a little bit, because here's what I've learned. You, you, you're humble. And I, I think you need to understand the, mag the magnitude that you are touching our tech's lives, including my own. And your fight helps us have a voice. And then it helps us share our voice even further and getting the knowledge out there to unify all of us techs and not just within the US, but internationally. And so, oh my goodness. So after being a nail tech and doing all of that nine years ago, you did a continuous as an advocate for new policies in our industry, as well as serving as president of the Concerned Beauty and Barber Professionals. You've continued pursuing, pursuing your Juris, I believe it's called, master's degree at Emmy University Law School. So yeah, and I'm gonna back you up a little bit before you go, because I've, I've done a lot and you know, it's sometimes it overwhelms me when I look back and I'm like, did I, am I still here? That's <laughs> you, yes. <laughs> yes. But after, um, after the years in the industry, I started watching our industry take a turn, like in about 2011. I could not understand why nail, you know, the nail industry, the hair industry, why we weren't making the same money. I, you know, professional value. It was, it was something happening. So I started reaching out to the state board. I started going to meetings. And I realized that it was bigger than us. And there were policy initiatives. The reason why our industry is not thriving like other industries, because there's policies that are dated and the yeah. ones that are, that are dated. <laughs> there, then there's these policies that are designed to, like I said, we, we've been fighting deregulation. So I started the Concern Beauty and Barber Professionals and Politics Beauty and Barber, if you can see the T-shirt. I started it uh, based on the fact that we have to have changes in policy. And if we want to change policy, we can't do it without an education component because education is to, is the root of who we are. <laughs> you can't be can't say you're a viable profession if you don't have an education component. So we started the Concerned Beauty and Barber Professionals with a continuing education component because we have to be continuously educated every profession licensed profession has a continuing education component and a lot of our states we still don't have ceus yeah. nevertheless that is what we've been working on for the last seven years and just to give you an example i have some numbers and when we started really honing in on these bills in 2015 let me grab this yikes so in i'm a numbers girl so i'm like you got me going already okay, yes. yeah so here i'll tell you so in 2015 we tracked 308 bills in 2016, we tracked 343 bills. In 2017, we tracked 409 bills. In 2018, we tracked uh, 229 bills. But in July, we had 300. By July, we had 355. That's just to give you some numbers about. And my 2019 numbers are actually on the website. I didn't write it on this paper. But just to kind of show you that every year. We were having hundreds and hundreds of bills that were being introduced to affect our industry and beauty and barber professionals were not privy to that. We were not paying. We weren't paying attention. You know, we and we've never been organized. Like I said, our industry started with manufacturers who said these products are dangerous if used incorrectly. So we're going to train these professionals. Their license liability is transferred to them. So we've never really been organized. Now we're at a space in a place where we're not selling products our manufacturers have kind of we were the middleman and our manufacturers a lot of them now sell products on the open market so that's left us to kind of fend for ourselves and we've never done that before we've so we're in this new space in this new place now where we have to be our own advocates yep oh my goodness speaking so much truth there and this has been a fight that i've seen for many years and you know it's harder because before we didn't have social media to be able to connect like this to be able to help mm -hmm. unite it was more like if we traveled to a trade show and if the conversation came up or if we talked to our, our representatives of our state and so today we are helping making some changes so this is where we get a ride on the rainbow that you've created and help help all of us but you know get us united to be able to to just continue this it's so powerful and so necessary oh, it's <laughs> yeah. and so to, to try oh go ahead 
No, so I was going to say after, so at 2011, 2013, 2014, 2015, all these years we've been tracking and monitoring. I've been doing all that, but in 2014 was when I actually decided that, you know, after years of, let me go back to 20, 2013. So in 2013 in Georgia was the first time we actually introduced a bill that would, um, Georgia's one of the few states that has continuing education. So we were just going to clean it up. So we actually introduced a bill that was read um, in the in, our, in the committee in a committee, and when it was read in committee, I actually testified. And when I testified, I was able to prove that the monies that were being collected over a series of years, because we've been tracking all kinds of stuff in addition to these bills, we were able to prove that the the fines and the monies that were being collected weren't being allocated back to our industry, which was not which didn't look very good. <laughs> that we introduced ended up making it to the Senate floor and it actually went for a vote. It did not pass on the floor, but that's when I realized that we would have to have people inside of legis legislators or people inside of the process to actually really help fight for us. I mean, if you don't have a industry, it's, you know, as a legislator, you know, honestly, politics is a pay to play. We don't have money. We're not big lobbyists. You know, we're, we're a, a small organization, but a, a very powerful one. But, you know, you got to be able to play the game. So I was like, you know what? We can't pay to play. So somebody needs to get on the inside so we can play. <laughs> yes. That's when I, um, part of the reason that I ran for office, I started watching my district and my, what was happening locally to Georgia. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to run for office. So in 2014, I ran for office. Give me goosebumps. Actually, when I ran in 2014, I won the primary, got to the general election against the incumbent. And got 37%. Nobody had ever come that close to beating this man ever. I came back again in 2016, did not have a primary, but got 43.8% in the race. And I was almost there in 2018. And then that's when I got a dose of what politics is all about. And there's mm -hmm. an ugly side to it. And it was ugly. A lot of things happened. It became uh, very racial. And it, it was just, it, it, it broke my heart. It broke my spirit, but it didn't break me to the extent that I gave up. Because in 2018, that's when I was admitted to law school. Um, <laughs> I love that drive. You didn't let them give up on you. It fueled that fire. And mm -hmm. oh, yes. And so that's actually the rest of your resume is not only did you get into law school, but you became an intern at the Public Health Law Program and the Center for um, Disease Control. I mean, Power <laughs> and you're using your voice. And I tell people all the time, if you have a voice, freaking use it. Like, why do we sit here and complain to people all the time when we make these posts online? And I'm like, did you share this with your local legislation? Did you share this with your with your local mayor? Even you know, start little and go big if you need to. And they're like, I don't know who to contact. I'm like, what? How? You need to get yourself out there because your voice. You're ready to use it. You're just not using it in the right forms. With you, Tamara, you've been able to, to not only use your voice, but get into the forms where it needs to be and then use the fight, that fuel, to continue to know that you can make a difference. I'm so proud of you and so honored to even be talking to you right now of the power that this has. You know, sometimes we don't realize until we have a moment like where we're all dealing with right now of having to shut down businesses, some of it's mandatory, some of it's volunteer, of understanding where our rights are, that we've worked, we've paid in for 28 years, I've paid taxes, I've had to actually pay in because I've been profitable. But yet, what do I get out of this if I'm shut down too, you know? And so using that voice on so many levels, but in your case, you also protect the client as well as the tech. You really are out there on the health safety side of it. And so with some of the new things that have come up with like the COVID-19 and all of that, how do you think that this will change some of the, the things that I'm fighting for? Do you think it might make it a little bit easier because you have a little bit more support? Or do you think that it's kind of shut down and they're focusing on other things and then our bill gets pushed through for a little bit longer? So this COVID-19 I think is a wake up call for, um, uh, this this country, first of all, <laughs> so wake up call for this entire nation, for this entire world. It's a total wake up call. But specific to our industry, I think it's a wake up call in regards to where we are with our standards. And I, I'm gonna go back to my internship at the CDC. When I got the intern, became a law student, and got the internship at the CDC. 
I was able to, they were very interested in our industry. And that was, that was what got me in the door because of the, where I was in law school and the fact that I come from this industry, which is an industry that is, they recognize is on the front line of transmission. Like they understand that, you know, there's health professionals, there's people in the beauty and barber industry, there's massage, there's all these people that are on the front line of any kind of transmission of a communicable disease. And I think that with this, this is the, I hate that we're here, but the fact that we are, we can't do anything but but make something great come out of it. And if making uh, and initiating policy that um, we can change, and, and here's where our efforts, we, we've tried to work state to state. This has been our efforts ever since we started, but it's, a, it's too slow, it's too cumbersome, you know, it's too convoluted. It's too everything. <laughs> yeah. We can't continue to ask this state and that state and every state has their state rights. We can't continue to try to mend the problems of an entire industry nationwide, state to state. It's just too slow and it's just not working. And here yeah. we are today on with this COVID-19 and we are, we, you know, we're in a position where we have to, just, you know, the state is either telling us to shut down or we're, we're shutting down voluntarily. And I believe that if we had, had taken, if, if we could have better safety measures, that maybe we could have had a different approach to this, but we we don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is sad because there has, this has been in the works for many years, but somebody, and, and I'm a perfect example that along the way, the fight's just too much for me to fight. And then I don't know where to go. I don't know where to, to restart. You've refueled me. Like I've already sent an email to Betty Abernathy, who's our president of our board, who has been since my mom graduated in the 70s. And so when you have somebody who's been in there a long time and they've seen a lot of things, they're very knowledgeable. And so just picking her brain, you know what? I have a voice and I'm ready to use it. I'm you know, finally comfortable in my skin and, and don't care really what other people think. And I'm ready to go out there and be that powerhouse change. And I preach it a lot this year. In fact, on here, Gail's like, preach it, preach it. And she was talking to as well. So, um, you know, when you're ready, and you've been in the industry and you, you you get it, you understand it, and you're ready to fight for not only yourself, but for the others in the future of it. This is the time. But once again, people like me, we drop the ball. You're not dropping the ball. You're you're continuing on. And so, man, so let's help like others unite. Like where do they begin if they want to do this in their state to help unify? Is there one area to go to that we can sign up for? I know there's a lot of petitions going around right now, and, and I've read that that's not always the best thing. That's not really going to get our voice there. What you need to do is contact your local legislation and start your voice there. So sometimes you guys sharing all these petitions, it's, it's not getting where it needs to go. You guys will see I've not shared it because of that reason. So let's help educate. Where do we begin? What do we really need to do to help change the laws in our state? Let's talk about petitions um, just for a moment. Um, I, I see petitions all the time. And one thing I can tell you about petitions is legislators think they're a joke. <laughs> they, because when you have people signing petitions, the only thing that will move a legislator is their constituency. If you vote them in, you can vote them out. And that is the only thing that threatens them. Petitions are a joke. And I hate to say it because I know a lot of people get, you know, signing this and signing that. Oh, no. Good. You know, they have all these numbers, but legislators say, if this person can't vote for me, I don't really give a crap what they say. It's sad, but true. I've been on the other end where I've pushed something in a town we were in. And my attorney called me and said, I saw your name on this petition. And he kind of informed me what all up. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I never really looked at, you know, how they see it, I guess. So that's huge knowledge right there. So, <laughs> yes. So, continue on. Yeah, and I know a lot of people like signing petitions and they feel like they're doing something, but I can just tell you that the effectiveness is just not there. Yeah. So, we begin. So, where we've begun is uh, so we have uh, Politics, Beauty, and Barber, and the Concerned Beauty and Barber Professionals, and our organization is two in one. Every second and fourth Monday, we do what we call Monday School. And Monday School is where we have, um, we have an alliance. Let me go back. I, didn't, I don't know if you saw that part too. We have an alliance with OSHA. 
And this was an alliance that we established like back in uh, 2014, I believe, with OSHA. And it's ongoing. I think we're in for till 2021 now with them. And because they, even the federal government recognizes that, like I said, the CDC recognizes it. And that's why I was able to get in. The federal government even recognizes that this industry, there are health and safety issues that are not being addressed. So we've aligned ourselves to have these relationships where we can get information and we can share information and we can try to work on solutions. So we have we have this alliance with OSHA and Georgia Tech and we have um, other organizations, Women's Voices for the Earth, Black Women for Wellness. Like we have other organizations, uh, the Boston, there's a a, the the Boston um, with the nails. They they have these salons that they go into. So we have an alliance with them. So we have different entities that we try to align ourselves with to get information. And on our Monday schools, we have guest speakers. We usually have somebody that'll come in and disseminate information specific to what is happening. And we always ask them to tell us what we don't know because we don't know what we don't know. (laughs) They come in and tell us what we don't know. Um, The other side of the call, um, the first, that's the first half hour, the other half hour, we actually dive into the specifics of where what states our members are licensed in. So say you're Wyoming. So you have all the bills, all the specifics about the bills, and we really try to work to organize around the bills that are active, that are live, the legislators, creating those relationships so that we have a coalition. Our goal has always been to have eight in each state. If we have two nail techs, two barbers, two estheticians, um, nail techs, if we have eight in each state, we can pair you with two others in, in other states, and then we can have a, a whole coalition of nail techs across the country because your issues normally when a bill is initiated, there's another state that has either seen that bill or has that bill. <laughs> so these yeah. are, they're like duplicate. There's these, there's these organizations that are that go across the country and they duplicate bills and they, they do things that we've seen before. And so we're able to say, okay, we've seen this. We know who this legislator is. We know, we know who's in this committee. We know who we need to contact. We need to band together. So we create these quote unquote working groups to, to really attack this state to state, but with a, with a national push. So mm-hmm. it's, it's not hard. It just is strategic and it's all we have. So right now I am running for the United States Senate in a yeah. special here in Georgia. So I have been staying very busy because what I found that as we do these things state to state, it is, it's been slow, it's been hard, but we cannot stop doing it. We have to continue to do it, but we must also take our fight to Washington. So what I would like to do is get to Washington and create a, a federal um, a commission so that we can actually have our industry studied on the on health and safety and sanitation to figure out how we create blanket policies that mirror other professions and other industries. Because we are just as, you know, healthcare workers, we're on the front line just like they are. And like I said, we had to close in some of our states, but we didn't have to close, if that makes sense. Ah, oh, you've given me goosebumps on top of my goosebumps. <laughs> right now you're talking to my soul. So, you know, there's lots of comments on here. And so you guys forgive, we'll come back on replay on some of these. And I've written a few things down. But right now, one of the things that comes to play is Lisa Ann says, seriously, Amy, it's a lonely fight. That's why we're here today is because we all know that individually, we might have said something to somebody I wish that was changed, right? The next step is going to the right people and getting in the right organizations to saying, I'm going to make a change. And then pretty soon you got to be that person that's willing to be the change. And you guys know if you've followed me at all, I always say you have to be the change, believe in yourself and you know that you can do it. Now you have like minded people that are being the change. And and I didn't even know that this was going on until yesterday. I did not even know of Tamara. And let me tell you, I've been obsessed with her since then. You guys know how I am. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is this is the person that can help be that change. This is the person that can get us the knowledge so that we are not alone, like Lisa Ann says. It's a lonely fight. Let's team up. Let's be the eight in the state and let's let's do this. Like there's no reason why we can't. We have a voice. We're just not sharing it in the right places. This is your chance to do that. So on that that note there, 
Tamara, if people are just fired up right now, is there a place for them to sign up to apply to be the eight in the state? How do we get to that level? Politics, beauty, let me see. Politics, beauty, barber, take the and out. So politicsbeautybarber.org is the website. Politics, I'm typing it in right now, so I apologize. Politics, beauty. I'm trying to show my t-shirt. <laughs> okay, but take the and out of it, you said? Yep, just politicsbeautybarber.org. Yeah, I was on the site earlier today. <laughs> okay, so I just shared that into the comments. So if you guys, you guys want to use your voice and you're ready to stand tall in your industry, this is your time. This is affecting us worldwide, worldwide. There is no reason why the beauty industry, as many years as it's been going, and we are strong, independent men and women. Like we know how to run our businesses and we know how to work and we will work seven days a week the oddest hours to get people in to make that money if we want to secure our spot and not be taken over by all the diyers and all the people that are trying to deregulate everything out there we have to use our voice and say do you not see the the reasons with sanitation and the reasons that if you deregulate us what happens to the beauty industry and the risks that come with that this is this is the time that we can actually physically um, and visually see what's going on when there's not something in place to help protect us and to protect our clients. This is our time to use that voice. Oh, you have me. Yes. I'm excited. I'm, ex I'm excited yeah. when, I, when people get it because I can tell you there's so many professionals that don't really get it. They they see it, they but they don't have, a, it's a passion, it's a fuel, it's something inside of you that it will trigger if this is what you're supposed to do for the industry it will trigger you and when i meet people that are that can that get it and it triggers them i get excited so to see you get excited it's like i'm getting i'm just excited as you are i and love it so much really people are like sign me up no 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 we don't sign you up you get on there and you sign yourself up and you be independent and you continue to use that drive we don't sign you up you sign up oh yeah. yes exactly yeah. that this COVID-19 is speaking to the issues that that you know is speaking to our issues like it is it is really shining light on the fact that we you know we we've, we've been around for for a long time and we weathered a lot of storms and this something this is something that is unique but there are some health and safety precautions that if we if we could change some of the laws and strengthen our profession we can't have these these we can't have blow dry bars that are I don't know if these are professionals or employees or I don't know who they are. We can't have braid salons. We can't have these lashes that are just popping up everywhere. We can't have these weave salons. We can't have these enclaves where they're doing these services and diminishing our professional value because because they do it wrong because they're not properly trained. This is a reflection on us. Yes, so true. You know, in Wyoming, we're, they're very strict here, but it's interesting. So, for instance, my mother that got licensed in 70, early 70s, mm -hmm. if she just pays her $95 a year, I believe it is, or maybe it's for two years, she can, uh, after all these years that she's not worked in the hair, she can all of a sudden go in and work hair because there's no continuing education. So here they're so strict, we get these random, you know, salon inspections, no MMAs, you know, all these laws, but then there's nothing to, to get you continuously educated. So sadly, I found my niche, I teach online workshops, but I'm successful because they don't do that in schools and they don't make it accountable by the state. If this was accountable by the state, I wouldn't have online workshops. I'm this way because of that. And so it's, it's it's powerful when you can find your role of where you're supposed to be. I never knew, even three years ago, I would not have told you this is where I would be today. But I was like, this is so needed. I'm I'm traveling around. I'm exhausting myself going to all these different schools and all these salons and trade shows to get the education out there. Why don't I do this virtually and use use the social media the way that we can? And I know a lot of you guys are supporters. That's why you're here in Tech Talk Worldwide is you support everything that we do here with this. And so oh, I just love it so much. But the thing is, is you have to be able to have that fight within you. Even if you are a brand new nail tech, maybe you're still in school and you see that the regulations of what you're being taught in school, I hear this all the time. I ask them, how are you taught in school? And they go, I got the Milady book and I got the YouTube channel. That's how they were taught in a professional school setting with 300 to 400 hours to get their education. And it's like, what? 
but thank goodness because it's made me successful with online businesses but it's sad because i should not be this should be taught and forced every year to be able to have that and so for on the on education and the CEUs always respect the states of the people who have fought for that because it's making sure that you guys are up on sanitation annually it's making sure that you're up on the latest of the things and if your inspector comes into your salon and you're not you you have the fear when they walk in and you just sit there and like oh please God don't find anything don't find anything. <laughs> them they are getting paid a lot of money our money that we pay them to come inspect us ask them what's happening with our state what's what's the latest in the rules what's going on let me be active in something like that so use that inspector distract him from inspecting you to use his knowledge they have it mm -hmm. yeah look at you i love it I, I talk about this all the time i don't know why i didn't find you before you're my kind of people i love it i know right so um let's see there's lots of people on here just saying amen tamara Yes. Yes. Amen. Um, oh. yes. Gail says um, there will be a blessing that comes from this virus. And, you know, it's interesting that all of us have prayed. I just I wish I had time to do this. I wish I had time to do that. We all got time. right now. Let's put it to use. Do an email. Do sign up. Don't you, Amy? Yes. Yes, exactly that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Karen says, I think people sometimes think about their small world and they can't fathom what or how just accepting hurts them and the client's negativity. So they're not they're just kind of like like she said, kind of staying in the small world and not understanding this is this particular virus is something that has affected everybody in this world and in one way or another whether you know somebody personally has had it or maybe you're not able to buy toilet paper right now because of it i mean so everybody's been affected and financially it is going to be a big hit and having to set ourselves up for success on that so yeah um let's see Oh my gosh, guys, I'm sorry. Tamara, there's a lot of comments on for you as well. <laughs> sorry, um, and so to kind of speed up through, Deb says, um, that is so sad. I thought that the NYS curriculum, which is 250 hours, and I did theory as well as hands-on. Sanitation is huge in NYS. And so um, it's huge everywhere, but here's the thing. To people, how many of you that think you followed the rules completely that you were very strict with your sanitation realize that you kind of let it down a little bit that maybe you weren't so strict on the clients washing their hands with Kim and then you just slightly sprayed them now don't you see where you've gone back to the basics and gone no 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 I'm going to use this kind of soap they have to sing the happy birthday song when they're washing their hands <laughs> and you want to hear it out loud um, when they sit down with the sanitation you're making sure it's everywhere so even though you followed the rules do you see where we've kind of been a little lax I know mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. yeah and I don't think we're going to go back from here I really think moving forward we will be you know really intentional about making sure that we're following these, these sanitation standards yeah yeah, absolutely. Um, so Lori's on here. She says, I'm gathering info for Boston Public Health as you have. Uh, oh, sorry, it's scrolling up. Um, how many dates have mandated closures? I don't know that one. So I know Washington State has uh, Minnesota, um, Nevada. I, and then, of course, New York. New York has had something. Um, I saw Philadelphia, I saw Detroit. So I've been seeing cities and then I've seen those those few states. So we yeah. just I'm trying to pay attention to, to see where the where it's happening and, and what how people are actually handling. I, I see a lot of honestly, I see a lot of places that are still opening and still doing business. Someone asked me what I encourage people to close. I, I don't think I can I don't think any of us can make totally make that decision. Like as professionals. I mean, I'm not a health expert and I would never try to make that decision. Yeah. And you know, it's hard because some places are mandated. So Wyoming's not yet. We're just getting the virus here just this week and it's not, you know, statewide yet. So they haven't mandated it, but I imagine that they will. Now I just got back from teaching a two day class in another state. And so I've been in six airports last week. So I quarantined myself. 
And so um, our, my best friend's uh, husband is an ER doc and he was like, let's give it six days and then see if you have a fever or anything and let's we'll reassess then. So um, like, like some fever. Fever, voluntarily, we have to take ourselves out. But sometimes we see that it's been like two weeks and sometimes we've seen like Nevada is an entire month. And so then we don't know how long we should, but I think it's a reassessing it daily and keeping the education out there and knowledge of what really is going on and not just turn a blind eye to it. How do you feel? You look great. I feel good. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and truthfully, I have a lot of health issues. And so, you know, yeah, I was kind of concerned on what was going on, but um, yeah, I feel good. And I'm on day, I'm, I've been home for three days and I've watched Netflix and did lives <laughs> and I'm enjoying these days off. And um, my clients, they understand, everybody understands. So these, those of you that are getting clients that are giving you that backlash of like, well, what do you mean? Like what made me really sad is there was a tech on in our group that said she was pregnant and she, she was just worried about all of that and what it would do. And so she was voluntarily closing her salon and she screenshotted a client messaging her that was like, what? Like, what about my nails? You know what? You do not need that client. You guys have heard me <laughs> many times. Fire those people that bring that anxiety. Because let me tell you, if you are good at what you do, even if you're not, you have the passion about what you do and they know that you're clean and that you are consistent at what you do, they will choose you and you can feel that person really fast. You do not need that in your life, not in any way from your work or your personal life get them out of your chair. And so I was yeah. proud of her for standing tall. And um, obviously you could tell she was a very sweet girl and didn't know how to respond. And I was just like, let me respond to her for you. <laughs> you would get her. <laughs> I know, right? And I'm kind, but there's times when I realize that um, you can't be kind all the time. Yeah. So Lisa Ann is on here. And Lisa Ann, I apologize with Facebook rules if I say your last name. And Tamara does not have her phone with her, so she doesn't see these comments. So Lisa Ann uh, met you years ago, and she said, Tamara, you've come a long way. I remember the day that we first talked. So um, I can share with you, or you can watch on replay what the last name is on there. Um, Hi, Lisa. <laughs> yes. And so, oh my goodness. Okay, again, Serena is on here and she says, oh, and I forget Serena where you were, I just was talking to you today. I I wanna say like Australia or something. It says our borders are now closed. Oh, here in New Zealand. Um, they closed last night. Our government is trying to slow the curve. It's very scary times at the moment. I've stepped up my sanitation big time. Exactly what I was saying a little while ago is that we realize we might have been slipping a little bit of where we could have been better, but that is not just the beauty industry. This is as a whole of every business out there where we can um, pick up the pace to help with this. So, you know, but if all of us did our part, look, look at that, we can make a difference. Us as one can make a difference. And I believe in that. Yeah. So <laughs> you have a lot on your plate. So right now you're in real or you're trying to get into uh, the U.S. Senate um, further. Oh, my gosh. Everything that you do. Tell us a little bit about what's on your plate right now. And is there anything that we can do to help boost you? So I am finishing my last semester of law school and I am taking uh, two, two pretty hard classes. I'm taking well, I won't say hard, just an extensive amount of reading. I'm taking constitutional law and I'm taking citizenship and immigration law. Um, that gives me a more of an overview so that, would, you know, preferably if I'm elected, I will have enough working knowledge to actually navigate the law in those areas. Um, so where we are with, the, with this race, uh, I, I need beauty and barber professionals nationwide to really support uh, me getting to Congress. Um, me getting there is us getting there. It's not just me. I'm taking you with me because like a part of my agenda and people that don't really understand this industry, they're like, why are you, why do you have the beauty and barber industry on your agenda? Because this is an industry that affects everybody in some capacity. I mean, whether, whether or not you go to a salon, you have a spouse, a sister, or somebody in your family who's frequenting uh, a hair salon, a nail salon. So we have to have higher standards that, uh, that address this industry. So if they cannot be a part of our efforts as, as, as advocates with the concerned beauty and barber professionals and politics beauty and barber, um, 
support my candidacy. Just, you know, I need I need all hands on deck right now to, to move our agenda forward. And it'll bring national attention to us. It's, it's never been about me, my heart and my my whole heart is I love this industry. I love what we do and I love who we are and I will fight to protect us to the very end. Thank you for that. Thank you so very much for that. We're not done. I'm keeping you on here for a little bit. So I'm with you. Your closing statement today. <laughs> I'm with you, Amy. <laughs> uh, I love it. Um, let's see on here. You know, Jenna's on here, and Jenna, I can relate. She says the only thing that I've realized from all this is that I'm not cut out to be a stay-at-home mom. And <laughs> Jenna, you know me. I wasn't either. And it's okay to admit that. And then, you know, it's interesting that, yeah, this is going to bring some families closer together, but it's also going to make us have to renew our why. And sometimes <laughs> our why is our sanity that we have to get out of the house and do something we enjoy doing. And mm -hmm. I did Jenna's nails when she was in high school and she turned around and became a tech, worked for me a while, lives in another place now and is doing her thing. And I'm so proud of you for that. And, and you knew me when I was a mom having to take my kids to work with me. And I'm like going nuts. I didn't have the choice. I couldn't afford childcare, you know, and it got to where you really have to find this balance and you have to be true to who you are. And this might be the reality that, yeah, you know what? I think I need to make my business successful because I can't do the alternative. And mm -hmm. I appreciate your child care workers that deal with a lot more than what we ever have to when it comes to health and safety and all of that. Mm -hmm. When I was a um, when, you know, the beauty of being a nail tech, I always wanted to be I didn't want my kids to be latchkey kids. I was a single mom. And I can just tell you the beauty of this industry has always been like the flexibility because yeah. I wanted to take my kids to school every day. But I wanted to pick them up and bring them home, do, give them dinner, do homework and have my time. Like I was really structured with raising my sons who are now 18 and 21. Yeah. And I can just tell you that the industry, that's why I love this industry so, so much, because it allowed me to, to make the money that I needed in those hours that I could work and still be the kind of parent that I want to be, wanted to be. So this yeah. is phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah. Absolutely. Ah, oh, I'm loving it. So Lisa Ann says we should all applaud Tamara for what she's done. She's never wavered. She truly is passionate and she's committed. That needs to be a review on your page for more people to see. Actually, that's a good idea. Is there on your website or on your Facebook page, if we have connected with you, is there a place that we can talk about how you inspired us? Do you allow reading? Oh, I, I, I don't have that, but I can actually add that. As I've never, look, I don't never done that. I've never been asked that before. <laughs> well, today's the day. Let us build you to keep this fire going in you to educate us. And so even if we can send a private message to you and you can screenshot it and share it out, guys, let's fill her cup and let her know that she is making a difference in our industry for us and you're feeling the fire for those of us that didn't know where to put our boys now we do and 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 you guys hopefully you guys watching this and there's many of you on here right now do people, cry on, do people cry on your broadcast because i feel like i'm getting yeah. so full. i feel so full <laughs> Amy. <laughs> Good. Let me, let, me, let me tell you, I've cried. I've sobbed on here. My, my guest has sobbed. You know why? Because this is live. This is real. This is passionate. And, and, you know, my reflection of where I stand on my side of the screen comes from the reflection of what the guest is. If the guest is really calm and mellow and, you know, there, I tend to be calm and mellow in there. But when there's a fire and an energy that I can feel, boy, does it get me going. So yeah, this is I'm it. And I'm like, I got ahead. I have to, I'm like, I don't know. What this is. <laughs> is, this, is this normally how Amy does her broadcast? Like her, her guests come on and just cry. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And we laugh hysterically and we cry. It's all real. But you know, um, you're going to get me going. It's it's honestly because of your heart and it's where you are. And if you were not live yesterday with, um, I don't know who exactly you were talking to, but it sounded like somebody out of Minnesota in the health department. I, they were at doing a live Q&A. I'm so glad that I found you at that moment that I did because that moment 
I could not let go of this. And it just refueled me even more. I already, you know, I'd sent off an email to the state to Betty and just said, what, what's next? What can we do? You And they know me, they know my, <laughs> <laughs> and so does your state know who you are and know your voice and are they able to use you as well? We, we always think that we need to use them and use them and we pay them, they better do this for us. Sometimes, like what you said, you don't even know what the questions are. You don't even know what's out there. It's up to us to tell them what we need. And um, so let me tell you about, so our efforts are national, but I, uh, I'm actually physically in Georgia, but all of our efforts are national with, with what we're doing. So the, they, 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 they know me here, Amy, yes. but they don't really, like, <laughs> they don't really like me. <laughs> because. Uh, I don't like I, I'm, I don't quit. I don't stop. And I'm going to continue to press and press and press and press. And if only I would go away and I'm not going away. Yeah. But you know what? That comes with everything. When you have a voice, you're not going to be able to please them all. But the ones that believe in you look at every single presidential election we've ever had. There are the ones that love them, the ones that hate them. And you know what? Pretty soon those ones that hate them finally develop a voice and they kind of you can either team up together and continue that fight together or you learn from each other because you learn to listen and go, oh, you know what? I can see now where they're coming from. And it opens your eyes and then together you can collaborate and make something even more powerful. But unless we can open up and absorb what other people are saying. Doesn't mean we have to agree with them. Just listen. Then from there, we can make better choices about what we want to um, be able to do. I know there's many times I've been, you know, stuck on something and like, no, I've always done it this way. It's good this way, but somebody can still prove things to me. And I'm like, okay, fine. I like your way better. <laughs> and I'm going to admit that, you know? And so um, the thing is, though, is just listening. And then still going on with your own opinion of what you want to do, you're not going to please them all. And you never, ever will. But you know what? The ones you're pleasing and the ones that you're being a voice for, that's all that matters. Oh, Man. oh girl. Look, if you break me down. <laughs> that's not what this is about. Not at all. What kind of broadcast is this? <laughs> You're like, I'm never accepting an interview again from a stranger. Oh, oh my God. Okay, so Robin, your family. Yeah, Robin's on here. She goes, I've been thinking about law school. I started a chapter of a law fraternity when I was in college. I have three classes left for undergrad, and I want to combine it all with the beauty industry as well. Do you have any advice that you can give to Robin? Oh, gosh, yes, Robin. Do it, do it, do it. There's such a need. So let me tell you about the program that I'm in. I'm actually in law school, but I'm getting my master's in law. If you become, if you want to practice law and be an attorney, that's your Juris Doctorate. That's a JD. I'm getting my Juris Master's, which is this gray area, Robin, between those that want to be in the courtroom or arguing cases and those and, and above, a, a way above a paralegal. So there's this gray area where all kinds of work exists. And specific to our industry, there is, you know, we could, you can do a myriad of things like you could, you know, there's manufacturers that need uh, that need attorneys that understand this industry that, you know, that you could really find your place in there. So I am actually getting my Juris Masters. And with this particular program, there's other other I'm at Emory University here in Atlanta, but there's other universities that have a Juris Masters. And it will um, literally open up. And the, the beauty is you can take classes specific to whatever your interest is. So you navigate the Juris Masters based on where your interest lies. So it's a I just think it's a golden opportunity for people that may not want to practice law, but you want to be in, in you want the work that you do. You definitely want to be in that legal legal area. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. For her, Robin, do it, do it. <laughs> yeah, and Deb's on here and saying that prior to nail school, she was actually a paralegal as well. So I didn't know that either. Um, mm -hmm. Phyllis just wants to let you know that Tech Talk Live is kind of like the Oprah show for nails. <laughs> <laughs> And it's funny because my cousin Kelly, who is a nail tech in California, told me that I had what's called the Oprah effect, that everything yes. I touch, like, you get this and you get that. And, and I go, I wish I could give out freely, but what I give out freely is education. And so you get education and yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can totally, that makes total sense. Like I get uh, it. 
see um, why I'm so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and now you see why I continue to do Tech Talk Lives. I'm not sponsored. I don't get paid to do this. I love doing this. It's been a little over two years. And it's because of the connections that we can make and get the education out there freely, directly to the people who need it. And you guys know how important this is. And, and you can feel it right now. This is the first time that all of us have really feel a hit like this. And this is our time to take that hit. And I, I said the other day um, when I was live, I, I, I never use the word doom, but for some reason, I'm like, are you feeling doomed? And then I was like, as I was typing it into to the caption, I was like, oh, doom backwards is mood. And then I thought, the light bulb moment. You know what? It is, you, you can choose your mood. You might not be able to choose what we call doom that's going on right now, but you can choose how you react to that. And so this can let you feel like your mood is down and out or whatever, or you can turn it around and you can use that mood and fuel it up and be passionate and then get to the next level. And to Tamara, it's shared in the comments here. Tamara showed us how to do that already. And she she's letting us know that our mood, look how many times you've probably felt like you've had a little bit of doom, but because of your mood and your passion and your drive, you didn't let it stop you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And we can't. We can't. This is, you know, this industry is, is. I just, I can't tell you how much I just, this industry has been a blessing to my life. <laughs> Literally, I like, it. it gave me an opportunity to be the parent I wanted to be. It is now giving me the opportunity to be in a political space to, to speak life to us and, and change policy. So this industry is, uh, we can't ever give up on it. I don't care what happens. Yes, exactly. I know I'm going to retire doing this. I don't know what aspect because my doors keep opening and keep pulling <laughs> me into a new direction, but I'm riding it because I love it. And you're right. You know, my children now are 25 and 20. And so it's mm. been a lot of, you know, it wasn't easy raising them. I was single for a, a portion of that. But I did have those choices. I didn't always know how to be strict with my boundaries of my hours and stuff like that. But I did have the choice to be able to work certain times and and have cash daily. I mean, and I didn't have to wait for my monthly paycheck to come to be able to provide for my children and and mm -hmm. learn how to budget, which is huge. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, a lot of life lessons, right? Like this industry. We grew. It's like you grow up in this. Like it, it teaches you. You you mature mm -hmm. in this industry in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. Lisa um, Ann says, "Ask her how many times I've told her I know I am here to help. I haven't yet, <laughs> but why? I've gotten so frustrated in the lack of care." Yes. Yes, yeah, she has. I, I love you, Lisa. And I know you're coming. I'm just going to keep holding on, waiting on you. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Um, Barbara is on here. She says, I love to hear the positive attitudes during this time. And I can tell you guys earlier, I really wanted to set this Tech Talk live up for earlier in the day. And so when we were coming up with times, I was like, when would be a good time that we would reach the most amount of people? And you know, there never is because this group is international. And finally, I was just like, okay, well, I'll just throw out a time of, you know, that we did. I all day had this anxiety in me of like, oh my gosh, I get to interview Tamara and we get to be powerhouse <laughs> on the screen. And we get to make our voices be heard and be out there. And um, so you talk about the positive times during this, um, our positive attitudes during this time. It's all there. You're choosing to read or get into the social media of the drama and stuff like that, or you're watching the news or something like that. All the positivity is there, but you're reading whatever your mindset is. So if you start going through and just only focusing on the positive ones, you're going to feel the positivity back. So you're here today because you needed this. And thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, absolutely. I know it's contagious. I'm excited all the way over here. <laughs> I love it. Um, oh my goodness. So once again, guys, I'm I'm kind of scrolling through quickly. There's so many comments and people on here, and so much love for you as well. So we know kind of what you're doing now. We obviously have gotten a, a glimpse of what has been in the past. Where what do you want to be? What's your true goal in the next year, five years? I want to see this industry be in a better position. So whatever it takes and however many years it takes, and I know that that has to be initiated with policy changes. I want to I want to continue to fight state to state, no matter how slow it is. I'm going to continue to fight there. 
but I want to continue to, to, to raise our voices in Washington as well. We, 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 we're not going to be silenced. This industry, these changes have to happen in order for us to never see this kind of pandemic do what it's doing to us. And, and we, we have to have some, some, some things in place for the next, anything that ever comes after this. So that's what my life is. I don't, I don't have a plan beyond where I am today. I just feel like I have to keep fighting until I take my last breath. <laughs> Thank you for all that honesty as well and being vulnerable with us today and being strong mm -hmm. with us today as well. Um, I just can't thank you enough for that. So you guys know that Tech Worldwide is a private group. So therefore we cannot share these lives from this group, but I always upload them onto the YouTube, which makes it a shareable link. This, if you are, are uncomfortable using your voice, but you know that it needs to be out there and you know that more, you have more texts that aren't in this group that need to hear this. When we make it public, would you, and I've never asked this before. I've never asked this on any live that I've ever done. Even my private ones where I do nail art and all of that, share this one. If you can share any of them, share this one. You won't be able to share it until I um, upload it into the YouTube. And you guys know I post it all over my pages and all of that. So go to my personal page, find this live, and share it on your page. Share it with nail picks, share it in schools. Just share it. Share it all over. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amy. We got a fight that we can't stop fighting. And we have an industry that we have to save. And it takes all of us to do it. So everything helps. Yes, thank, thank you guys so much. Serena says, Tamara, can you please come to New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> sure. They have to open the borders. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. She said they closed the borders. Yeah. However, flight, flights are so cheap right now. Oh, I know, but I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Take advantage of this. You know, I've had to cancel a lot of flights recently and then move some things around. So the rest of my year is kind of open, actually. It was not that <laughs> way. But now I have some opportunities to kind of pick and choose more of where I want to go. And I was looking at flights again. And I'm not like it's unreal. Like flights are down to like 40s and $50 flights. And then your, wow. luggage, your luggage costs you more than the flight itself. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, come on, travel, travel. We're yeah, gonna... exactly. Exactly. That. We're going to get back on track. Yeah. So Gail says, this has been great. Thank you, ladies. And actually, Lisa Ann said earlier, um, I it's up in the prior comments that she almost skipped over today's live. She said, call me Jonah. But you know what? Please, please put your voice to the caption of this when you share it and say this is a must see live. Like I, I promoted all over. You really want your voice to be heard and you really want to know the next step to do. This is the live to be able to listen to. The link is in there for you to um, follow through to the next level. And Tamara, you are a powerful woman that I just want to continue supporting you any way I can. There is a place on her website where you can volunteer with her. You can sign up volunteer as well as donate. And I can tell you, even if it's a $5 donation, whatever, this will help her continue on this fight for us. And I don't ever solicit anything like this in any of my tech talks. You guys know I've never asked you to share, to donate or whatever. But in this case, I really think that this is our future. And if we want to, we have to support the people who are out there with their voice. And Tamara, I can't praise you enough for coming on today. And I don't mean to make you cry or emotional in any no, way. You're, you're killing me, Lisa. I want to express is we need you. We need you to continue this fight. And we need you to continue to be the powerful, aligned, independent woman that you are. And because of that, you have fueled our, many of the fires within us to be able to follow your rainbow. Thank you for paving that path for us as well. <laughs> Oprah, I swear. <laughs> and you get that for free too. <laughs> I adore you. So with that being said, I don't mean to make anybody cry, but if you guys are feeling it, it's because you know you've been there and whether it's been in the nail industry or another job that you've had, you know that fight. And unless we team up together to, to continue this fight, we're not going to go anywhere. In fact, what we're going to see is worse. We're going to see deregulations and we're going to see things worse. 
And we need to, we need people like Tamara who are willing to just push through and get past the naysayers and think about all the things, like you said, the negativity that you have that not only tied into the industry, but with racism and all that, it's BS. It's our time to continue to be strong. The word empowerment is on the screen right now. Be, do this, use your superpowers, get it out there. And if you don't have the voice, write it. It's in you. You just don't know how to get it out. Just write it. Get it out somehow. Oh, love social media these days. Thank I'm you. sorry, Tamara. <laughs> oh, I have to thank laugh. you. I'm crying and laughing. It's like this, this <laughs> emotions. I'm full and I'm happy and I'm full and I'm happy. <laughs> Just so much, in all caps, Lisa, I will end this on that. It says on purpose and oh, absolutely. So Tamara, I can't thank you enough. It's been about an hour, so I don't have a clock in front of me. I just, I've done these long enough. I can kind of sense about the time. And so I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I would love to have you on as a special guest again, um, continuously actually. And I do these every week, but I, I really would like to touch base with you even in about a month if we can, just as the, the virus continues to go on and see more people affected and get more following onto you know this platform to be able to make a difference. And uh, and then continue from there as a regular basis. And so I, you got my vote, girl. I know I'm not in in Georgia where you are, but I I definitely will be signing up, you know, under through your website and to be able to continue through that and be the eight in my state. I will find my way to be the eight in the state. So thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Nail talk, T tech talk. I'm tongue tied. <laughs> I love it. You guys, thanks so much. Continue if you're watching this on replay, continue to send the love and fill her cup and let's keep her fueled up and going because um, this is what we need. And if there's any of you out there that have the same voice and I just don't know you, I don't know everybody, I know a lot message me because I want to get more education out there like this at a time where people are going to absorb it in a more powerful way. And so uh, Tamara, again, thank you for your time and for everything that you do. And thank you guys for Tech Talk Worldwide and love you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs>